Hi, I'm Amy Ip. Welcome to the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark Fontaine. With the Service Design Show, we help you to stay one step ahead by talking to the people that are shaping the service design field. We talk about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments, and the challenges up ahead. My guest in this episode is Amy Eep. Amy is currently a design director at Tencent, and previously she worked at Microsoft and was the first interaction designer in Asia that Yahoo hired. For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about topics like reforming design education, about how Chinese clients interact with design, and finally, how do you incorporate service design within large organizations? If you want to fast forward to one of these topics, check out the episode guide down below in the description, or just stick around and enjoy the whole episode. So, let's jump right in. Welcome to the show, Amy. Hi, Mark. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome to have you here, and I'm very happy to again have someone from Asia sharing stories about design. Um, Amy, let's jump right in. And uh, the first question I have is, what was your first encounter with service design? Oh, wow. Uh, it was when I was a student as, at Carnegie Mellon University in the States. And what did you hear about it? How did, how did you meet? How did you and service design meet? So I was a, a master's student at Interaction Design Program. Um, so at that time, so we started to notice that people um, start calling, like there's, say, there's a subdomain called service design. Um, so, and we started having a lot of conversations on like what service design is, you know, what interaction de design is, you know, and, and start from there. And I think like, I, I guess like till today, you know, in the industry, a lot of people are still confused with like, you know, with all these terms, interaction design, UI design, user experience design, you know, service design, right? <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, I guess definitions are will forever be a hard topic to to crack. But um, yeah, well, this was back in how many years ago? Wow, um, that was um, two thousand and one to two thousand and three when I was All in right. Carnegie Mellon. So that, that's quite a while already. Yep. So, um, Amy. Um, I've invited you to share a few topics that uh, interest you at the moment. And for people who haven't seen any of the previous episodes, let's uh, give an example of how our co-creation format works, right? I have some cards over here with some topics and you also have a stack of cards, right? Yeah, Can you show them you. up? Yes, there they are. So I'll pick one of your topics and you'll pick one of my question starters and we'll co-create a question that is up to you okay. to answer. Yeah? Okay. Right, okay. Let me let me pick the, pick the first one. Yeah, um, I'm going for this one uh, because uh, we've talked about education before and mm -hmm. I'm really interested what you make out of this. Uh, it's called reforming design education. Do we have mm -hmm. a question started that goes along with that one? Okay, so maybe why? Can you see it here? Yeah, see it? Okay. I see it clearly. Yeah. So I guess the question is why do we need to reform design education? Do we need to reform design education? Um, I think uh, I would hope uh, to see that definitely there's a, a reform um, in design education in Asia, particularly in, in China. Um, I think um, I have been uh, working in China in the past five, six years. Um, so I have worked with many designers. Um, I am also one of the board members in, um, in, uh, for Tencent Design. So in, within our company, a lot of times for senior designers, when they... Um, uh, uh, when they need to get a promotion, they'll come and give a presentations. And uh, so uh, other designers will come, senior designers will come, you know, at the, uh, in, in the judging panel to give feedback and comments to make sure that uh, uh, that designer get promoted in that um, in one particular department is also meeting the standard for the company standard, mm -hmm. right? So I myself also uh, manage uh, uh you know, used to manage it like a, a, a huge design teams. Um, so I have, and, and I also, every year um, I used to go to a, a fresh grad uh, uh, hiring trips in yeah. China. So yeah. in China, when we go, 
So we will go to different locations and talk to uh, students that potentially would be interested to be interns, as well as a, a fresh grad hire, you know, for our company. So I do get a lot of chance to talk to young young yeah, designers, yeah. and um, and I think it is one of, one of the challenges I see is um, in the past um, there or, or even now I think uh, the design education is still changing um, mm -hmm. in China. Uh, a few years ago, when I first first came to China, when the, the most of the interaction designer or user experience or use experience designer that I hired, many of them come from industrial design. And they may have taken one or two classes, um, um, in, like about user interface design, digital um, uh, product design, and then they want to come and work for us. Yeah. Um, and um, so what we all know the industrial design process is very similar you know, to service design, interaction design process, right? So, but it also means that um, they is is the the uh, of at least from my previous experience that if we can start the education a lot earlier, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to have more impact on the design uh, on the designer himself or herself, right? So, um, so most of the times, um, I see a lot of designers start picking up design theories, start practicing design theories, not until they start working in the industries. Um, and a few years ago, I was also invited to uh, um, to go be guest speakers um, in one of the well-known um, universities in China. I'm not going to mention the name, but when I go and talk to the professors, some of the professors to to told me that they realize that there's a huge need in the market, but that but themselves don't really know how to teach. So because they they are they are also new to to the industry, so they are inviting a lot of people from the industry to come and give short term courses, right? So I see that the professors need the needs, um, but they also have limited information to help them to reform um, the the classes. So I do see that there's a huge need, you know, to 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 do the reform. And is that the reform in? Uh, uh Thinking in products uh, to thinking in services and experiences is that the reform that you are talking about? Uh, I think yes. First of all, um, in uh, I think in in China or based on my 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 experience, um, many of the so in in the traditional schooling systems, right? So they give a topic, they give some assignments, and ask students to to finish certain tasks, right? But in design, we all know that um, people who, who are in the design industry, that we need designers to, um, to be innovative and somewhat re rebellious a little bit sometimes, yeah, yeah. right? In order to do new things, to shake uh, the At ground a little bit, to do disruptive, yeah. right? So, so it's, it's the school, um, it's the school the environment prepare that. Right? Are the designers prepared to be challenged when they're, you know, working in the industry? Uh, let me share one example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a design grad student at, at Carnegie Mellon, I remember um, the first day when I was at school, the professor has uh, prepped me, um, um, prepped the, the, the class that um, in the next two years, we are going to do a lot of design critiques. Right? So your design will be challenged by your classmates. So for, especially for uh, those grad students, their undergrad didn't come from design background who are not family with that. Please, uh, uh, you know, be patient with the process. When, when it first started, you may not feel comfortable. Um, but, you know, while you go through the process, you will learn that all the feedback from, from others will, will help you to polish the design of your project, right? Yeah. So when, when I first started, so my undergrad was not in design. My undergrad was in information systems, right? So, um, but I get interested in user interface design, and this is how I get into interaction design, right? So, so I, I was one of those who get through those process. Of course, the first time when, when people criticize my design, I feel like, oh, you know, I have the pride, right? Yeah. But then I have also gone through the process when I start hearing feedback, right, uh, uh, from different angles. And so like, oh, okay, right, you know, there might be some holes in my design, you know, that will help me, right? Uh, you know, it, I really cherish the, the design process, you know, I really cherish the, how team 
how the team works together. Right, so so putting it in 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 the, in, in the Chinese culture, um, so I think um, being respectful is important in Chinese culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, working in hierarchy, uh, uh, you know, in organization, the hierarchy in the organization is also important. So how can designers um, bring up important questions respectfully, and not to break some boundaries, that not to challenge certain boundaries, authority. That, that I think um, the, the young designers need some support or need some communication skills or ne- negotiation skills to help them to achieve that as well, right? This is, um, this is especially a challenge within the Chinese culture. Yes, that's correct. Hmm. Um, that's one part, one part of it, and also um, one of my personal hypotheses is I think many of the design process um, is. And the design theory are developed in the West, right? And we all know that design theories uh, and process design has a deep is is deeply rooted with philosophy, with the culture, right? Uh, uh, with yeah. human beings, yeah. Yeah. right? So all these design theories principles can easily be understood by the Chinese culture. Excellent question. Right? Excellent question. So, yeah. so these are some of my questions. Say, so let me give you another example. So a lot of times in design process, we say the first step is we define problems, right? So there are, so there are a few times that I have encountered that when I go to my team and 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 I talk to the team members and say, hey, you know, let's define some problems, or the internal clients that I work with. When I ask about, hey, let's talk about problems, they say, no, 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 there's no problem. <laughs> but when when I start using another word, you know, like, oh, what are the user requirements? And then they will start talking. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. So, so this is something that I noticed that if I were directly translating the the words in the Western world in English to Chinese, just the perception of how they understand certain wording, there is already a gap, and so- it's going to slow down people. Sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, that's that's purely also the reason why I want to learn on the show what's happening in Asia because I think it works two ways, right? I think design can learn so much from uh, the Asian culture and bring mm-hmm. these topics into the Western uh, mindset of design, and it's we have so much to learn. That's that's my feeling at least. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is also a very interesting topic to discuss in the design industry, right? Because I think a lot, so especially my years, uh, um, you know, working in a in, in a Chinese uh, uh, design community, many of my um, uh, many of the designers who reported to me um, after they left my team, you know, um, and then they would come back to me and say, "Hey, Amy, you know, when when you ask us to do certain things back then, I really feel uncomfortable." And I didn't understand back then, but now I understand. And they come back, and and they would thank me and say, "Oh, thank you for sharing at that time." And we would also joke about that. Oh, maybe Amy, your Chinese is not good enough back then, and so that I couldn't understand, right? So, so I think so many of the design theories principles, it just takes time for them to understand. And also, when I first started, it is true that. Um, I, I, I realize that the language that I use is also difficult for them to understand. It, but to me, or in, for the Western world, it seems like, oh, it's so obvious. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so while I'm working in China, like in the past few years, I constantly learning, trying to to see how I can explain it in their language to help mm-hmm. them to better understand what we are trying to achieve here. Mm-hmm. Really interesting, and uh, I, think, I, I hope we'll see some uh, more results from uh, from Asia. And I guess the language barrier between English and Chinese it's one of the issues that one of the reasons that there isn't so much collaboration uh, between those yeah. two fields. So, Amy, yeah. um, we have a second topic that uh, strongly relates to the first one, and it's not a focus on so much on education and on students, but it's uh, more of a focus on Chinese clients. Okay. And I guess uh, that, that shouldn't be a too hard of a bridge. Okay. So, um, so I will pick, who are, the, who are these Chinese clients? Um, so uh, uh, probably it's not the, the perfect wording, but basically what I'm trying to address is, um, so in in um, in order to 
I, I think surface design or uh, interaction design as a whole is, is a new concept, you know, f- uh, for many industries. For us, you know, the, the industry has been developed for, you know, a few decades, right? Um, but for many of, of, of the folks who are not in the industry, it is new to them. So how do we tell them our values, you know, or the KPI, the ROI, right? Um, and I think in different cultures, um, in different industry, they have their own set of values. They have their own set of KPIs. So I think it is also important to understand um, how, you know, how do they measure success, right? So that is one of the reasons why I want to talk about, you know, who are our Chinese clients and how do we work with them? Um, what, what have you found so far? So have you found any differences between Chinese clients and clients that you've worked with in the West? And if so, what are these differ- differences? I think traditionally, um, the, the I think the design the the design profession um, is not well established in Asia yet. I think um, um, uh, maybe for you, you know, from the uh, from the European countries, you know, like uh, basically even for someone who is not in the design industry, they pretty much understand what design is and what the values of design will be, right? And they respect and appreciate design. Um, but I think in in in, in China, um, I think the interaction design, uh, service design, didn't come out till the last decade, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of people still don't really quite understand it. And uh, and traditionally, the word design is usually being associated with like art productions, just well, output. I, I, yeah, and I guess that isn't that much different in uh, in Europe or in the U.S. I guess. Uh, yeah, so it's just putting a beautiful face on top of an existing thing. Yeah. Right. So, um, and and uh, sometimes they would just, we would we designers just joke about in the industry we are perceived as uh, the uh, uh, the factory labor uh, um, that produces like art assets, <laughs> right? Like in in Mandarin we call it mei gong. Right, but which is which is not the case. Like, uh, so so we were able to um, so constantly we were trying to educate, you know, the the uh, the product managers that we work with, you know, and and we joke about it and ask them, you know, to respect design and not treat us as you know one of those art SS output labor. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I think they, um, deten- they I think with the uh, how the industry grows, you know, in its past ten years, people start to understand. Um, but still, there there is still needs uh, to have a lot of communications and a lot of educations. So, have you seen any specific things that um, that do resonate with Chinese clients when you talk about design? When when do they get excited? When do they get interested? I I think it's um um or at least in my personal experience, maybe a, a decade ago. You know, when we talk about design consulting in China in, or in design consulting in Asia, the question is, would, would uh, the Chinese willing to hire consultants, right? Because consulting industry is something new to them. Why would I want to pay someone to give me recommendations? You know, I can think, I can come up with ideas. I'm the expert. Why do I want yeah, to pay someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I am in the industry. I know, I know better, right? Why do I want to pay someone that I don't know? To give me recommendations, to give me some reports or suggestions, right? Yeah. It doesn't make yeah. sense, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think over the, the years now, you know, I start to see, you know, uh, um, uh, some design firms, uh, including Western design firms, uh, especially some local design firms, start to have uh, gain some good reputation, rep- reputations, you know, from from in the industries, right? And you know, some ch- banks in China. You know, uh, some you know s- cell phone companies. You know, like different industry will mm-hmm. go hire design consulting firms to help them <laughs> to um, to think to think about you know how the design can better be be done, right? Um, so, so I think um, yet for, for, I think for now, um, I, I think traditionally, you know, the the it's probably similar to to the states as well. You know, like traditionally. Um, um, uh, when we talk about, especially in the digital uh, 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 sector, right, they tend 
to make things, right? They want engineer, engineer to have certain outputs, right? Do I have this app? Do I have this website? Yeah, yeah, Do I have yeah. this like for, uh, internet of things, you know, that tangible product, right? So I think in, 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 in the past, um, or at least now, if we just say, hey, I'm going to sell the strategy, you know, it's become something vague for the Chinese clients. So usually it will be, you know, selling the, the strategy together with the tangible uh, output delivery as right. a package. Yeah. Right. I think this it tends to be a little bit more easier for, uh, for, for the clients to, to accept. Right. So um, I think the, the, some of the Chinese design cons consulting firm that, that, that I know of, they, you know, like a lot of times when they go and sell the time clients, like they are still using the language as like the, the website, you know, the certain services. Yeah. Right. But moving forward, but I see that when they deliver, it's not really just the website it's the whole service design strategy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So 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 a lot of times I think it takes time for them to better understand that, hey, when we talk about design, this is the deliverables, you know, the, the strategy is included. Mm, but even mm. though when they first came, they can tell, oh, I want to I need to redo my website. Right. Mm. But I think it will take time to educate, you know, the clients, you know, at the industry as well. So so uh, they're still talking about the uh, uh, deliverables, but they're also yes. selling the road to get there. That's maybe yeah. a difference, right? Yes. Right. I mean, because if we, we if we, I think, uh, uh, so, so um, me and some other designer, we always joke about if we go and, and tell someone, our friends that, you know, what we do as a designer, as a user experience designer, as a service designer, I don't think we can use one simple sentence to explain that. Right. I mean, if mm -hmm. we have legal designers, if I just say, hey, I'm a service designer, then, you know, I don't need to say anything mm -hmm, else, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but for most of the folks, uh, the clients or most of the folks here in, in Asia, we do need to have like a long page to describe to them what we do. And then so they still don't, still a long and way then, to go. And then they still don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. <laughs> true. That's true. Well, um, Amy, uh, sort of, I'm now realizing that the third topic is we have a really nice balance. We talked about education. We talked about clients. And if I look at the third topic, it's called service design within our corporation. Um, uh -huh. Do you have a question, Stata, that goes along with uh, that? Th then we'll have covered uh, students, clients, and businesses. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, okay, so maybe how can, we, how can we practice service design within a corporation? So I think um, what uh, I think a lot of times uh, maybe some of the uh, uh, um, design consulting uh, uh, designers would think that within a corporation it's difficult or almost impossible to press practice service design, and in reality. I'm not gonna lie. It's difficult mm -hmm. because when you work within the corporations, um, so there are different, always different departments, different teams, and all the roles and functions are, are well set, right? So, not unless um, the corporation, the organization's structure is set that for that design team to do the service design strategy and then have it spread out. Otherwise, it's it's really difficult to practice that. So it's difficult because there is no space or you don't get the opportunity to take a more holistic view on the service or? I think it's the perception of what what the role of design is in, in, in Asia or is in China, right? Like what we discussed earlier, a lot of times they do, they tend to have like, um, they, they want to know, how, um, they t there's a strong tie between design and deliverables. Right. Design right. and then SS, yeah. right? Design and the image. Right, design and websites, right? So when we talk about design service strategy, the service design strategy, and then it, it cross link to all the different departments and have it all work together, right? It's, it's become a lot more difficult because in, di in one big organization, you have different departments and different departments, they have their own manager and own bosses and other managers talking to each other, right? Versus if you were hiring an outside company, you know, outside design consulting firm, when they present a strategy, you know, naturally all the managers will come and listen to this design uh, design firm and present, 
even though it's still difficult to implement, but at least they're all sitting in the same room. They're all focusing because they're paying this company. So they want to hear what they're saying. So how right? do you manage, right? You, you're, you're within a very large organization. How do you cope with this? Um, so a lot of times I think is, um, so when, when I was in school, uh, when I was still in design school at Carnegie Mellon, I think the teacher has, uh, um, has prepared, prepared us well. Um, I think when I was there, they constantly tell us that we are, when we graduate, um, and leave the school, we're going to be the pioneer in the industry. So I was like, at that time, I have no idea what it means. So, so, um, so I have started working in the industry. I started to realize that, Hey, you know, like, what is the role of, of, of interaction designers, service design, um, uh, service designers? It was not, that w- the, the definition is not clearly defined. The role is not clearly defined. Um, so I think I am so from, um, from because of the industry, um, because of the training that I get, I'm so used to help defining my own role, mm-hmm. um, building relationship uh, with cross teams and help defining the process and reestablishing new process. Uh, as long as we have the same goal, I believe we can do that, right? Mm-hmm. So in the past, in the past, you know, uh, when I was working in, in Yahoo or Microsoft or he, even here now in China, then I would tend to, you know, um, bring up, like, first I'll bring up the goal. I first bring up the, the problem that we're trying to solve, right? As long as the problem is being recognized, um, I can work my word magic and try to talk to different teams and say, hey, you know, in order to solve this, maybe this is something that we can do, but we would hope that maybe you can collaborate, mm-hmm. right? And it's not, and making sure that uh, the results or the honor it will go to everyone in a team, not rather just design team. I think that's, uh, uh, um, that's also important, you know, to work so, in teams. So you, you team like collab. sort of the, the, the glue between all the different departments, right? Yeah, um, so I can tell you an example. So um, uh, uh, when I was working in, in, in Yahoo um, for Hong Kong in 2003, uh, from 2003 and 2006, uh, because I was, the, uh, uh, I was the first head count in Asia uh, for interaction designer. Mm. So before me, they have, they have never worked with an interaction designer before. So, so, so of course, they, uh, the, the, the producers back then, they didn't know how to work with me, right? So suddenly, like, there's a designer come and say, hey, you can do this, there's a guideline, you know, you can't do that, right? They yeah. would feel intimidated. Yeah. So I, I did take the time to do, uh, with the help of my boss back then, um, so we, you know, we set up, you know, uh, different sharing sessions, to, to, um, and I would explain what are the, the user experience design theories, uh, the design methodologies, and this is how we do things, and this is how we do usabilities, and this is like uh, how we measure of success, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then I because it was only one of me, you know, for, as an interaction design resource, right? They can, you know, I can handle all the requests. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that you have to go through me, but instead I will share my design philosophy with them so that they can practice themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So. So in the beginning, you know, let's say, for example, when I first started, they would say, hey, Amy, I only have two days. You know, I want you to work on that. But of course, you know, I can deliver a good design. You know, for example, for a simple task, I may need four days. So in the first, the first time I work with that producer, I may, you know, just OT on my own without letting them know. And so that I can come up with something that um, with decent quality, mm-hmm. you know, at least mm-hmm. I think it's decent quality to go back and tell them, and hey, you know, this is this is what I'm proposing, you know, to do, and then they will look at it and say, hey, you know, oh, it looks good, you know, we, you know, we should try that, and then after it's been implemented and and people are happy with the results, and then I'll go back and tell them, hey, you know what, actually, I took my own personal time to work on that project. Mm-hmm. Next time, if you want something that nice, maybe you can give me a little bit more time, you know, and, so, and, 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 and piece by piece, we build relationship like that so and we form the process. What you're basically saying is that, uh, and this has been a topic on the show also a few times, that service designers or designers in general need to be uh, very open and clear and transparent about the process they use instead of just uh, showing up with the results, right? They need to, yes, edu- they yes. need to educate their environment to see the value in the process. Yes, and, and also I think different industry, different company has their own culture and has their own process, right? Mm-hmm. So I see many of the designers, yes, we do have certain design process, but 
does that mean that we we need to make sure and force them certain companies certain teams to follow our design process or as or we could be flexible you know to modify a design process to make sure that the key milestones are met the key KPIs that we needed for the design is a met right mm-hmm. but we can also be flexible to blend in and create, co-create, you know, new process development process right. together with the team right. to make sure that uh, what we're delivering are also meeting their KPI, you know, yeah. All right, Amy, we're heading to the towards the end of uh, of this episode, but I still have two questions uh, left for you. Uh, and the first okay. question, the first question is, um, what would be your Tip for somebody who wants to become a better service designer. What will what would be your single mo- most valuable tip? Um, I think it. So so we we have to. Uh, I think we have to understand the the products. We have to understand the surface. I think it's. I I I think it's really hard to say how. Um, but I think we we need first of all. Especially in Asia, we need to establish our credibility. You know, we need to establish our, our professions. So I think it is also important to uh, brush up our, our communication skills to make sure that um, the deliverables that we have align with the values of the customers. I think um, definitely this is important. And and with all the things that we have discussed early in the show, is I think there is a lot of communication education need to be done. So how can we? polish um, the message that we want to deliver and to make the, our clients or, uh, or the Ch- particular, in my case, the Chinese clients, that they, that they feel comfortable with what I'm delivering. Um, right. That requires a lot of communication skills, project management skills, as well as negotiation as, uh, and persuasion skills. Maybe, uh, maybe the, 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 the new design skills instead of, the, of next to the craftsmanship that we still need to have, we need to become more or at least better within these skills that you just mentioned. Yes, that's correct, I agree. Final question, Amy, and I'm sure we, d- we discussed a lot of topics and you gave a lot, a lot of insights, but what is your, what is the question that keeps you awake at this moment? What is your biggest question? I think, I think, um, it's about how can I help young designers to rebel a little bit more? <laughs> As what we discussed earlier, you know, um, I think I, I see uh, a lot of times um, the, Ch- the Chinese culture is very respectful. Respect is important in the Chinese culture, right? So, so as I see a lot of times, like uh, some designers who come from really good design schools and because they are fresh grad, so they have no working experience, so after they come in, in the corporate culture, they tend to be complying, you know, PB, to be very respectful for the current process. But unfortunately, many times, most of the times, the current process within the corporation is not, is, uh, is not perfect for doing good service design, mm-hmm. right? So how can we um, encourage, uh, provide uh, 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 support to these young designers so that they feel a bit more confidence and comfortable um, to share their thoughts and make the change, um, and and this is what I think of you know you know all the time. And so, and and relate to the earlier sh- discussions in the show, I think it has to start from design education or from earlier um, education um, reform, you know, in order to achieve that. Start at the beginning. Uh- yeah. Learn people. Well, learn young students to push boundaries. That's that's a big question. Yeah. How do you do that? I think yeah. maybe people can share some uh, thoughts uh, on that. And uh, I hope a lot of people from Asia are watching. So uh, who knows? <laughs> maybe we can learn something from that. Amy, thank right. you so much for making the time. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. It, it was an honor for me. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. As 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 the honor is on me. <laughs> thank right. you so much. Thanks again. What are your thoughts about the topics we've just discussed with Amy? What is the highlight of this episode for you? Let us know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode and like to see more interviews with service design pioneers, be sure to check out some of the previous episodes and subscribe to the channel. We have a fresh new episode for you every two weeks. 
for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.